will be talking to you about Squirrel, a framework to analyze on blockchain incentive mechanisms with deep reinforcement learning, which was joint work with my wonderful collaborators. Most blockchains use incentive mechanisms. For example, Bitcoin and Ethereum. They need incentives to get people to validate transactions, which can be computationally expensive. However, these incentive mechanisms can be susceptible to attacks. First came the original selfish mining attack, and later, more attacks were found. How do people defend against these attacks? Usually, they propose new protocols, complete some limited theoretical analysis, if that, to justify a protocol's security. Furthermore, these theoretical analyses are specific to a particular protocol and not extendable to other blockchains. Therefore, there's a need for a more systematic approach for determining the security of a new protocol, one that is one, broadly applicable to a variety of protocols, and two, can consider more complicated settings than those considered in the theory. Today, I'll be talking to you about our proposed systematic approach, Squirrel. Squirrel is a framework for analyzing incentive mechanisms based on deep reinforcement learning. We demonstrate its usefulness in the following ways. First, we recover known optimal results. Second, we get the following new results. One, we beat state-of-the-art selfish mining strategies when hash power is stochastic. Second, we identify a problem with the rushing adversary model in multi-agent games. And this is not specific to the blockchain setting. We observe no benefit to selfish mining with three competing parties. And four, we identify a new attack on Casper FFG when miners collude with voters. First, let's talk about the model for blockchain we, we will primarily be considering in this talk. We start out with a root block, and miners can add blocks to the root block and other blocks that have already been added. In this way, we generate a blockchain, as shown above. In Bitcoin, the longest chain from the root node is considered the canonical chain, and miners who mine blocks end up on the canonical chain are rewarded, based on how many of their own blocks ended up on the canonical chain. In this example, the first blue block, starting from the left, and the two red blocks are rewarded, but the second blue block is not rewarded. This incentive mechanism is vulnerable to attack. Let the red miner be an adversary. A miner can hide away mine blocks without publishing them and wait for an honest miner to publish their own. Then upon seeing the honest miner publish their own block, the adversary can override that block by publishing its own blocks. In this way, the adversary is able to decrease the reward obtained by the honest miner. The current state of the art in optimizing attacks is to model it as a Markov decision process. An MDP models the agent maximizing rewards in a randomized but known and stationary environment. This can be solved exactly using the following MDP solvers, which basically do dynamic programming, policy iteration, and value iteration. What's wrong with using policy iteration? You have to represent the, your policy as a large matrix scaling horribly with the problem size. In practice, the state space can be incredibly large, even in simple protocols like Bitcoin. This leads to two main problems. Value and policy iteration cannot handle large or continuous state spaces, and cannot handle non-stationary settings like Markov games, which are multiplayer repeated games. Our solution is to use deep reinforcement learning which represents the policy as a function parameterized by a neural network rather than a function represented by a table. Furthermore, deep RL is adaptable and trains as it goes, which allows us to use it in a non-stationary setting. In the case study section of the paper, we study scenarios where using policy iteration will fail because either the state space is too large or the environment is non-stationary slash unknown. In this section, we will talk about what the Squirrel framework is exactly. We give an overview of the system. First, we develop a simulation environment based on specific, the specifications given by a blockchain protocol. Then, we define our strategic agents, each with their own initializations and RL algorithm. These agents can then interact with the environment and learn from the rewards it receives based on the actions it has taken. Note that in the paper we provide a framework for specify the environment, state, and action spaces. We make a standard assumption in security, that is, the agent is a rushing adversary. In the context of blockchain, it means that the agent has time to wait for the honest party before performing some action to react to it. Let's start out with our sanity check. 
We'll compare the following three mining strategies against a strategy found by Squirrel in the Bitcoin setting as baselines. We consider the honest mining strategy, which follows a protocol. We consider the original selfish mining strategy, which we call SM1. And we consider the optimal selfish mining strategy, which we call OSM. In this graph, the x-axis is the attacker's hash power, and the y-axis is the fraction of total reward that the attacker received. We can see that Squirrel is able to recover the optimal selfish mining strategy. It is able to recover the same reward as OSM, and the strategy it employs is indeed the same. Now we present our first case study. Here we study the case where a miner's hash power fluctuates randomly in a way that is unknown to the agent. This cannot be solved optimally using policy or value iteration because the environment is unknown. In this case, policy iteration strategy can overreact to hash power fluctuations, but Squirrel learns to not react. First, let's talk about the experimental setup. The Squirrel agent was trained in an environment where its hash power was 40% with a standard deviation of 10%. The Honest and SM1 agents used the fixed strategies as defined in their papers. Thus, the OSM strategy was solved by initializing its hash power to 40%. Then, each agent is running an environment where the hash power fluctuated depending on the fluctuations from real cryptocurrencies, based on data we collected. We see that in a real-world example, Squirrel was able to outperform prior work. We now present our second case study. Here, the x-axis is the strategic agent's hash power, and the y-axis is the fraction of reward received above honest while mining against an agent running OSM. In this case study, we want to ask a simple question. Is OSM a Nash equilibrium with multiple players? The answer turns out to be no, as we can see the deep RL strategy outperforms OSM in the graph. However, in the process of doing so, we discover some weird results. In the graph, we get some curves that are not smooth, and the strategic agents actually perform worse than the honest strategy. Why? In the low hash power setting, we know that the best strategy for strategic agents is honest mining. First, let's consider what happens when an honest party publishes a block. Because of the rushing adversary assumption, the OSM and Squirrel agent can adopt that block immediately, letting the honest miner get the reward for any block it publishes. Now consider what happens if Squirrel gets a block and publishes. Because of the rushing adversary assumption, both OSM and Squirrel perform their actions late to give themselves time to react to the honest agent. So OSM doesn't see Squirrel publish the block before choosing an action. As a result, OSM waits and does not adopt Squirrel's block. Now assume OSM mines a block in the next round. Then of course, the OSM agent will not choose to adopt Squirrel's block and will instead publish its own. In this way, forking occurs and the protocol is actually not being properly followed, which leads to irregularities observed in our results. Recall that a rushing adversary is one that is able to receive information from the honest parties early, which it can use to perform malicious attacks. The rushing adversary is a standard worst-case assumption and security applied to the single strategic agent setting. However, carelessly applying this assumption to the multiple strategic agent case can actually lead to non-intuitive results. Consider a toy example where the yellow agent's reward is the maximum number of votes for either Bitcoin or Ethereum, and the blue agent's reward is the negative of the yellow agent's reward. The honest agent will vote randomly. Then, in the rushing adversary assumption, the honest party first makes a choice, and then the blue and yellow agents see that choice and make their own votes. The blue agent will always choose to vote opposite to the honest agent, leading to the yellow agent's reward being capped out at 2. Now assume that the blue and yellow agents don't get any early information about the honest agent's choice. Then all they can do is vote randomly which can lead to the yellow agent receiving, to a, receiving a reward of 3. So in fact, in this game, the yellow agent benefits from strategic agents not getting early information. What does this mean? We have to think carefully about how to implement worst case adversaries when there are multiple agents with incomplete information. This observation is not limited to the blockchain setting. Here, we consider the question of whether selfish mining is profitable with multiple players. Here, x-axis is the attacker's hash power, and the y-axis is the excess relative reward it receives. 
The agents are all adaptable, so it's not possible to solve the optimal strategies using value or policy iteration. We see in the graph that once we have three squirrel agents with equal hash power each, they no longer receive excess reward. Here we, we look at the performance for a strategy in a game with three squirrel selfish miners adapting against each other. Here the x-axis is iteration number, and the y-axis is excess relative reward on the left and fraction of a particular selfish mining action on the right. We see that around iteration 100, when squirrel agent 2 starts performing that selfish action more, the other agents gain a reward while squirrel agent 2 is immediately punished. This gives some evidence that deviation from honest mining leads to unprofitable strategies in the three-player game. Our conjecture is that honest mining is a Nash equilibrium for three or more agents. Finally, we use Squirrel to attack Casper FFG. Here we give a reminder for, on how Casper FFG works. This is a finalization algorithm for Ethereum, which is an algorithm that decides which blocks are on the canonical chain. Validators with stake in the system vote on blocks to justify the blockchain, where the choices are between blocks at the same height on the blockchain. If consecutive blocks in the chain are validated are justified, then the blocks in the chain that are uh, before the first uh, before the first justified block become the canonical chain. Note that even if a chain comes along later that is longer than the finalized chain, it will not become the canonical chain. In this way, Casper FFG is designed to protect against the self against selfish mining among other attacks. With new parties introduced to the protocol, there's a need to incentivize proper behavior. How does Casper FFG protect against misbehaving validators? First, if a validator votes for two different blocks, which is called equivocating, then its stake is slashed. Second, if a validator does not vote for the justified block, then the validator's stake is also penalized. Here, the blue validator voted for a block that was not decided to be the justified block so it got stake penalized. It has been shown that honest behavior among validators is a Nash equilibrium if each validator has less than a third of the total deposit. We can get around this by composing two attacks, an attack from the validator side and on the mining side. Using both roles, an adversary can choose which blocks to build on and vote for, and when to release blocks for votes. Intuitively, this should give the adversary more opportunity to exploit the incentive mechanism. As we shall soon see, this intuition is correct. Note that this game is too large for value or policy iteration to solve. Squirrel learns the following strategy. Let the red miner slash validator be the adversary. The adversary hides away a block it mined and waits for an honest miner to publish a block. The blue validator votes to justify that honest block. The adversary sees that, releases the block it was hiding, and votes for its own block. If the yellow validator votes for the adversary's block, we can see that the blue miner will be penalized for not voting for the justified block, and the adversary can gain excess reward. Here we show the performance of the attack mentioned before. The x-axis is the attacker's hash power, and the y-axis is the voting reward fraction. We can see that the strategy Squirrel learned significantly outperforms the baselines, and is clearly able to obtain excess reward without having a third of the mining slash voting power. There are a few big messages to take away. First, DeepRL is useful for analyzing complex incentive mechanisms with large state spaces and or non-stationary environments. Second, rushing adversaries need to be carefully implemented when studying multi-agent games. Third, multi-strategic agent systems may be more secure compared to multi-single agent systems. Finally, we need to be careful when composing incentive mechanisms, like in Casper FFG, as new vulnerabilities can develop. Thank you.